This is the RCA2 black and white portable television that I picked up out of the desert dump. And this thing has been sitting out in the, the harsh desert elements for probably uh, since about 1980, I would assume. And today, the previous video, we kind of went through it and it actually kind of turned on and worked. But today, uh, I want to resurrect it and not restore it. This is not going to be a restoration video. This is just going to be a resurrection video, which is, can we get it to work? In a previous video, I tested the CRT and also just a general overview. The T CRT tested kind of funky, but it did work. Also, when I fired it up, it did kind of come to life. It did have a little bit of sound. There was dust and dirt pouring out of the speaker. So uh, let's get going on, see if we can bring it back to life, give it a second life. Okay, it says KCS 1 something 8A. I cannot f see clearly or identify that middle number, so we're going to try and look through the Sam's book and see what KCS 1 blank 8As there were. Well, there's a KCS 148. Uh, one five. There is no one five eight A. One six eight A. One seven eight A. One eight eight a crap. Well, uh, I don't know. That's. I guess I'm gonna have to pull them all and try and see which one it is. Um, let's go out to the garage and fire up the lights and start looking around. I don't know. I don't know what else to do. It's. Uh, there's a lot of them there. All right, so we'll start with 968. And I guess that's 968. That doesn't look too far off. RCA 968, January 1968. That's a little bit older than I thought. Uh, let me get it out of here. Oh, here it is. Let's have a look here. Right, well this is definitely not it because it doesn't have both. It has all the tubes on the board, there's none on the chassis. So let's go to 978. Now this looks a little closer. I uh, have to take this out and see how it matches up. Okay, yeah, this is definitely it without a doubt. Without a doubt, this is it. Sometimes you have to go this route to figure this stuff out. So, you know, what I'm really interested in is this whole operation right here. And that's exactly what it is. There's a 1500 ohm resistor here in series with, with this. So, that's... Where did that resistor go? It's in here somewhere. It, it was in the first video. It kind of fell out. But it was basically in a unused pin here and then jumped over with the yellow wire connected to it. So we'll have to fix that first. Right here's the factory service manual. And our television from the dump now has a name. It is Gladwin. Will Gladwin relive well, Gladwin perform for us again. Let's see if we can get him to work. The first order of business here is to put the uh, 1500 ohm resistor back in series between this and the cathode pin there. I could get my magnifying glass and look down in there and verify that that pin is the cathode. 
Uh, having a little bit further of a look, the speaker's obviously gone there, as you can see. Uh, that's not a problem. So in order to get a raster on this thing, all we really need is a few things. We need high voltage, we need deflection, and we need the cathode wire here to be pulled to ground. The lower the voltage is on this pin, the cathode, the brighter, the higher the brightness is, the more biased on the tube is. So of course if this was broken, this is why we might not have seen anything in the first video. So first order of business is to get this, and this this is going to be probably very difficult to solder to. I might need to use some flux, maybe a Dremel to clean this up, because this is um, very, very corroded. Again, we're not going for uh, restoration. We just want to see if we can, what we can do to... Uh, get it to work. And you know what, I'm not even going to clean the weeds out of it. I could take and pressure wash this thing and get all this dirt off of it and probably not hurt anything as long as I didn't hit any of these coils with thin wire on them, but I'm not going to do that. We're just trying to resurrect it. We want to see if it works. Alright, I got this kind of tacked back together. Um, I'm going to power it up here, it powers on. And I want to check a few voltages. I want to see if there's high voltage. We'll start with that. Well, there was high voltage, and then something started arcing. Yeah, there was high voltage, and then something started arcing. I hear it. Somebody is very unhappy. Okay, we're warming back up. Yeah, this is not like a color set where it's going to shoot flame. We got nice high voltage there. Smell the Corona. So is it just a bad... This thing is like um, uh, coming apart as I play with it. Guess I better use a power switch. damn thing is okay So what's going on here? Is it arcing inside here? This is cracked. Well, look at this. I wasn't even looking at it. Where's the brightness at?
Oh crap. Okay. Boy, is that bright. So am I trying to diagnose a problem that doesn't exist? Boy, yeah, there we go. We're cranking along now. 15 kilovolts. I guess I should have looked at the screen earlier. Well, look at this. It's even got uh, static on it. Let me see if I can... Or snow. Let me see if I can... Uh, sync this up to where the camera will lock onto it. It's got snow on it. Look at that, the contrast works. I would damn near say it's working except... But that could be the speaker. Let me get a speaker on it, because that one's gone, and we'll see if it's got sound. Okay, well it's not entirely the speaker. Crap, look at this. I have it hooked up to the uh, the little leader generator. Let's see if we could dial that in. Um, oh, crap. Look at that. I know it looks dark out here, but hey, that looks good. It's a little bit compressed at the bottom. But it's a full screen with a sharp. See, the camera won't sync unless it's the majority of the light is from the television. But look at that. Okay, we've developed, it's developed some weird problem where it's, I smell something burning, too. I think something is arcing. Something is probably the copper has failed, the, the varnish has failed on the yoke, or maybe in the flyback. Uh, it's really hard to tell. Problems like that are super hard to diagnose because it only arcs out occasionally under high voltage and it is the yoke I saw it arc right down in there and now it's stopped and what I did is I took it I just turned it off and then I took and brushed out the dirt that was in there a little bit and it really cleaned it up. Uh, the set would probably work right now with a signal. Well, I know it would. Look at it. And what I've done is I've I've adjusted the vertical and hor I mean the horizontal vertical linearity and height to to kind of even it out here. So next thing I want to do is get it in the house. 
hook it to the direct TV so we can see the picture. It's going to be good. You could tell by, well, you can't see it out here because I'm outside, but uh, I'll run it on reduced voltage in the house. I'll knock it down to about 110. That'll probably get it down below where that yoke is arcing. And let's just see the picture on it, and then we can decide. I got um, I got varnish. We just pull that yoke off and clean it up a little bit and put some varnish on it. Super bright and super sharp. That little strobing there, I don't that's some sink issue with the camera. Super bright and super sharp. Didn't do anything to it except solder that wire, that resistor in that wire that pulled out of the socket because when they dropped it, the CRT rocked back and the neck tilted up and pulled the wire and resistor out of the socket. I'm having trouble with the audio here, and I don't know if it's the TV is malfunctioning or the mics are reversed, and the woman sounds like a man, and the man sounds like a woman. I would imagine there was a, some kind of a person or a camera or somebody following me all the way, so I felt a little safer and not as alone. Uh -huh. And now I do a job where a camera follows me around. <laughs> yes, so you're never alone. In very scary situations, much <laughs> like yours walking home. Let's talk about your character, Dr. Marlena Evans, on Days of Our Lives. Ah, uh, legendary. You're a legend. Legend. Some of the craziest storylines in daytime television history, I think, are from Days of Our Lives. Most notably, when you were possessed by the devil. I often wonder if other people in other countries look at American television and wonder... What are they spraying on us, or what's going on, because... It, it, I can't even watch it. You see, I have to let the direct TV box boot up because I leave it unplugged. I never use it. I don't watch this stuff. I don't watch TV. Beautiful picture, though. Bright, very bright, very sharp. Look at that. You're the person responsible for the chaos, and it's because you're possessed by the devil. And Jim, <laughs> he means the character. Yeah. Um, but but Jim was uh, was a devout. By the winner today, political terms is the category. Here is the clue, players. Officials called tribunes sat at Rome's Senate door, and if they didn't like. I'm just curious. On, I'm trying a different camera because I notice all the video in this exactly. thing has this kind of weird like thingy going on in there. Because it's a very good picture, but it's I can't tell with that distortion, that thing in the middle. Matt's still not been a lost. 
<laughs> it was a lucky. Have 15 seconds to show you how the. When sweet 22-year-old Anitra Council fell for charming older man Jason Page, she never imagined their tender loving relationship would ultimately send her into intensive care fighting for a life. Well, imagine that. Lying in her room. Um, let's get this apart and see if we can't take a look, a good, good clean look at that yoke and see where it's arcing. This thing just works beautifully. It's just beautiful. CRT looks brand new. And the reason why it's not arcing so bad right now is I'm running it on uh, the medium tap here isolated. I'm probably only running it on 107 volts or something instead of 122. So that cuts down the pulse size on that yoke quite a bit. Alright, look at this. Is this uh, cleanliness or what? And the yoke is in very, you know, it's baked. It's uh, sun-baked and environmentally baked from uh, living a very rough life. And you can see here, I can see it with my magnifying glass, but you can see kind of right here there's some area there where it's the insulation has failed the varnish that's on the coil and it's probably just arcing to this dirt that's on here I am tempted to attempt to pull the CRT and clean the whole damn thing and uh, try and fix this where it's where it's pushed out right there and see if we can get it all back together also these wires here you can see there they were pinched in between the flyback cage and the bell there a again because the when they dropped it, when they threw it in the dump, they just threw it out on the ground and the CRT popped back. The problem with with doing anything is the plastics are all so baked and so fragile that I'm afraid I'm gonna, you know, create more of a problem by breaking something than just getting it working and and walking away from it. Look Look at that tube is actually touching there because it's the CRT is back. So in order to, to do this, to get the CRT out, I would have to, and then if I wash it, is the Aquadag all going to come off of it? Um, I'd have to pull the whole damn thing apart. Let me let me take a look at this. I'm a little bit shy about doing this. Okay, the chassis came out pretty easy, just three screws. I can take a nice look at this. Got a rat's nest going in here. The rivets have, have completely failed on the uh, male side of the plug. There's the other clip right there, but I don't know if this plastic is broken. See if I could get this out of here. Okay, the cathode ray bulb is out. And you can see that that plastic there that held that down is broken away like for instance if you take a look at this one you can see the difference so the piece of plastic right here is broken away uh, i'm not i'm not so i'm not so sure i'm not concerned about it it's a resurrection it's not a not a restoration i'm i guess if you were you know, desperate to restore this, you could somehow manufacture something there, I don't know, a little piece of metal and a couple screws maybe, not sure. 
think what I'll do is I'll just take this thing over, uh, give it a bath. It's the original RCA tube. It's got scratches on the front of it too, which that's something else that kind of makes this thing undesirable. Okay, this is in real bad shape. And the thing about these, there's a huge uh, high voltage potential from this winding to the aqua dagger to ground, but there's really not a whole bunch of potential across these windings. So generally, when these things arc out, they'll arc out to ground. Now, if you look at this, and this is just from water, uh, and the camera's not really displaying it, but this is a lot of green copper and a lot of missing varnish on here, and I've already wiped this off. So what I'm gonna do with this is, um, I'm gonna stir this up and paint it with this. This is uh, the actual high voltage varnish and it's all separated but I'm just gonna mix that up stir it up with a chopstick and then clean this off look at it with a high power magnifying glass try and see what I can see very gently and then I'm just gonna paint it with this stuff Alright, you know what, whatever. Somebody mentioned that uh, I was like the redneck repairman for Vintage Electronics, so uh, there it is, bask in it in all its glory. CRT's cleaned up. I wasn't having very good luck with this. I think it's too old. I even microwaved it. I couldn't get it to mix. So what I did is I got a really crude coating here. Um, hopefully that'll work. So we'll put it back together and see if it arcs. Try and isolate the arc. And nope, now we got absolutely nothing. So that's what I was saying. Sometimes it's better just to, when you get stuff in this condition, to resurrect it, you just leave it alone. See, I've tampered with it now, and now I've probably shorted some of the turns together, and now I've created a real mess. Right, there's two ways to test this. Old school way, let it run for a minute, take it off, feel which coil's hot. Second way is to ring test it. I'm ring testing the top coil here. Come on. Zero rings, bad. Let's ring test the bottom coil. Okay, the top coil is giving us seven rings, or the bottom coil, I'm sorry, is giving us seven rings, which is bad, but this thing is, cal this machine is more for solid state stuff, which would be a lot fewer turns, so we're getting seven rings on one of them and, and uh, zero rings on the other. The DC resistance of the top one is 19.3 ohms, of the bottom one, which tests seven rings, is 19.7 ohms. So I probably, in screwing with this thing, I probably got a couple turns shorted together and that's it, it's, it's done. Well, I have been looking at this and picking at this and inspecting this with a high power magnifying glass for about an hour now and I, I'm just not seeing and I keep you know, I'm watching it on the ringer, and occasionally I move it around and I get three rings and then two rings, but it's just the, the water has eaten the varnish up, and the more I move it, the varnish flakes away on the inside, and then the coil short together. So, I don't know, I, I you know, this set is not worth the, um, the expense of a, a yoke. It's uh, in really bad shape. 
This was a resurrection video. I hope everybody learned something. This is kind of a common thing. I think uh, both Chris and I purchased BNK 1077 television analysts that had open yokes and we were able to pick at the stupid thing and get the thing bridged back together and working but I can't see it on this. I just don't see it. So it could very well be down inside. Um, so the insulation failed from the elements. It's uh, the TV did come out looking better with that tie wrap there holding, you know, it's held together pretty firmly now. It would have been neat to see it work again, but this is one reason why I don't clean the chassis before I uh, test it out. This is a prime example of that. So, so we had it working and everybody saw that, what a great picture it had. And literally all we did, all I did was just fix that. Um, I didn't spray any of the controls. I didn't spray the tuner. I didn't change any capacitors, any tubes. I didn't do anything. So that's a testament to quality right there, RCA. I didn't do, I didn't change one part. All I did was fix that right there. So uh, I will look around and see if I have a yoke that'll fit this. I don't know what deflection angle this is. I'll have to look all that up. But uh, we'll see what happens. Maybe maybe you'll see a part B, uh, part two, where where I find a yoke or something comes through and I win the lottery and I buy a yoke and give this guy a second life. But who knows, the flyback could fail. It's been exposed to the same elements. This transformer here could fail. It's been exposed to the same elements. You know, any of these things, the, the windings on the IF transformers are pretty coarse, so they're not gonna, I mean, look at how, look at how thick the wire is on that, so that's not gonna fail. But any of this stuff can fail from being in such a absolutely harsh environment. I mean, some people think cigarette smoke is bad. Try leaving it out on the hot desert floor for uh, 35 years. Anyway, uh, resurrection of an RCA black and white. Temporary resurrection. Back into the grave she goes. RCA black and white from about 1968-1969. Alright, here's another yoke off of an RCA chassis. It's not the same. It's a junk chassis I pulled out of something. And you can see one of the magnets is broken off there. One of the I think what those magnets do is they keep the thing straight on the top and bottom, but uh, this looks the same as this, so let's uh, pop it in and just see if it works. Sure enough, it certainly does work. That proves that the yoke, it's the yoke. Uh, guess I could pop it on the DirecTV and see what it looks like. Just look at that picture. Gee, can you tell what part hasn't been baking out in the sun for 35 years? Well, I think I got the yoke on upside down. Why is it blanking? Why is the camera blanking it with a different yoke? That shouldn't be blanking that.
Too much width needs to shrink the width down. But you can see the rock solid now, no problems. Was definitely the yoke from the beginning. Got a bad yoke, need a yoke. Um, again, this is a resurrection. That's interesting how that up there, see that? I wonder if that's due to that magnet. It's up here too. I have a feeling that's due to the magnet. If I pull the yoke back, what do we get? Huh. I don't know what the purpose of that magnet is. Anyway, maybe it's worth looking for a yoke. It's, um, it appears all the capacitors are good. I'm sure some of them will fail, though. Uh, if I was to put this into service and start using this thing regularly, some of those caps are going to fail for sure, without a doubt. Kind of like that shot right there with all the glowing glowage. It's kind of cool looking. I don't know if this is visible, but there's there's a little bit of a the list is long. arc to this, an upside down smile. And I think that's what that magnet does on the on the yoke, is it it flattens this out. I took the magnet off, one of the magnets off the other yoke, and that's exactly what it does when you hold it up here. It pulls this in, so it gets the, it gets the curve out of it. 